In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. He was in the world, and the world was made through Him. Yet the world did not know Him. He came to His own, and His own people did not receive Him. But to all who did receive Him, who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth.
Dear Heavenly Father, the final authority in heaven and on earth, the world was created by you, but you gave its stewardship to us. You so loved the people in the world that you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us, the sinless for the sinful. This a lopsided equation that is beyond our understanding. Because of this, there is now no more condemnation for us in Christ Jesus. For we have been set free by the Spirit. Thus, we bow down in awe of you. In the midst of uncertainty due to pandemic, we look up to you. We are firmly convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Help us to focus on Jesus alone whenever we are afraid or anxious about what tomorrow may bring. We cling on to what King David said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? As we celebrate Missions Month, we are reminded once again of the many lost souls who haven't heard about Jesus Christ. We lift up our family members, relatives, friends, and neighbors who have not known you yet. Please increase our burdens for the lost as this is your desire. Touch us to pray, give, and go as you call us. For the Great Commission is not for pastors or missionaries only, but for all of us, your children. Forgive us, O God, for neglecting your commandment, for shutting our ears to your calling, for knowing your commands, yet not doing anything. Be merciful to us as we prepare to participate in our communion 
as Christ instructed. In the name of Jesus Christ, our mediator, we pray. Amen. Walo po ang grupo ng mangyan na karaniwang matatagpuan sa kapuluan ng Mindoro. Dalawa po dito ay ang tribo ng Buhid at ang tribo ng Bangon. Sa misyon pong ito ay pinakay naming matunton ang mga Bangon. Sityo Linyama at Sityo Pawa sa Bongabong Oriental Mindoro. Ito po ang mga lugar na natuntun ng aming grupo sa aming paghanap sa kanila. Nagsagawa po ang Medical Ambassadors Philippines at ang mga volunteers nito ng isang medical mission para matukoy po ang mga pangangailangang pangmedikal ng komunidad na ito. Ang pangunahing pangkabuhayan po nila ay ang pangunguhan ng saging at mga lamang lupa katulad ng gabi, kamoting kahoy at luya. May sarili po silang lengguahe at iilan lang po sa kanila ang nakakaintindi at nakakapagsalita ng tuwid na Tagalog. Pakilala po kayo. Pakilala. <laughs> Pakilala po. <laughs> Mayroon po silang tinatawag na kwako. Ito ay gawa sa putik na sila mismo ang naghulma at nagdesenyo upang kanilang magamit sa kanilang pagtatabako. Naniniwala po sila na si Adan ay Diyos. Wala po silang konsepto ng langit, impyerno, espiritu at kaluluwa. Wala rin po silang ideya kung ano ang Biblia, ang kwento ng paglikha, at kailanman hindi pa po nila naririnig ang pangalan ni Heso Kristo. Ito po ang aming natatanging motibasyon. Ito po ang nagtutulak sa amin kung bakit namin gusto silang maabot. Ninanais ng aming mga puso na maihatid sa kanila ang nag-aalab na pag-ibig ng ating Diyos sa lahat ng kanyang nilikha. This is our 53rd Missions Emphasis Month. Since last year, due to the COVID-19 virus, we lost many opportunities such as to gather in church for worship and other activities such, such as having fellowship together. Some of us also experienced loss of health, some loss of business, some loss of job, and many are deprived of opportunity to meet friends, to visit loved ones, and travel for vacations. These are just a few realities. Besides, the pandemic became global concern that caused many inconveniences, worries, and uncertainties. We really don't know when this will end. We also do know, on the other hand, that doctors and scientists are in the urgency to control this pandemic. Yet with this situation, the worst reality is not only for people dying due to COVID, but people who are dying alone, psychologically and emotionally in pain, without the care and presence of their loved ones as they are being confined in the hospital bed. And the saddest reality, 
are people dying without hope. They die without Christ, and that's the most fearful and miserable part in the life of a person. Yes, those who depart this life without Christ are the most miserable people because they are without hope for eternity. We have been told, as written in the Bible, that since creation has been corrupted and destroyed by sin, suffering and death came as a consequence. However, since God is love, His mission is to redeem and restore creation into a new creation through the sacrificial death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the coming new creation, the new heaven and the new earth, there will be no more sin, no more sufferings, no more tears, no more pain, no more death. And we, as UECP family and Christ followers, we are committed to be instrument for the Lord's purpose and missions. And this month of June, as it is our 53rd Missions Month emphasis with the theme, Fulfilling the Great Commission in Our Time, as set forth in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, it says that Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Today we look into Christ's power, all authority, in verse 18. Next Sunday, our topic is Christ's program or the scope of the Great Commission to all nations, to all people groups, and disciple those who believe in verse 19. And with Christ's promise to be with us always in verse 20 will be our topic on June 20. And on June 27, a challenge for us to be involved by praying, investing, investing, and by going in fulfilling the Great Commission. Now, brethren, the Great Commission is to proclaim Christ and disciple those who believe because to become faithful and committed followers of Christ who will in turn make disciples. We proclaim Christ because He is the only hope for man of mankind, for the gospel of Christ is the power of God for salvation to all who believes. And to fulfill the Great Commission comes by the authority of our risen Lord Jesus. This is our topic for this morning, Christ's authority in which the Great Commission is grounded as written in verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, the word all implies the whole creation in heaven and on earth, in which Jesus has been given the authority, the right and power to rule all creation. Maybe we have wondered why this authority given to Jesus. Isn't Jesus God's Son, the second Godhead of the Trinity? Actually, the answer is found in Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to 8. It says, Although Jesus being in the very nature God, yet he did not count himself equal as God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, born in the likeness of men, and he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. 
Now, when Jesus was hung on the cross, He was abandoned by the Father as a payment for our sin. Jesus gave up His divinity at the cross to become the only mediator between a holy God and sinners in order to redeem mankind from sin as the sacrificial lamb of God. Now, after Jesus completed His sacrificial work at the cross for the payment of our sin, the Father raised Jesus from the dead as a proof that qualify His Son's sacrifice as accepted and perfect to pay for the penalty of sin. This also implies that the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus at the cross has conquered the power of sin and death forever, wherein Jesus lives and reigns forevermore. And this is actually also true with those whose lives are in Christ Jesus and who had trusted Jesus as their personal Savior through repentance of sin. Now, after our Lord Jesus' resurrection from the dead, the Father honors His Son and ascribes to Him all authority in heaven and on earth to become the head of a new creation of humanity. As in 2 Corinthians 5.17 reveals, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Therefore, with this, we can fully put our hope, our trust, and confidence in our Lord Jesus Christ. For there is no power in heaven or on earth or under the earth that has not been placed under His supreme authority. For at the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, friends, Jesus has absolute authority over every power in heaven and on earth. Even demonic power submits to Him, submits to His authority. And indeed, one day every knee will bow and surrender to His authority. Jesus has authority over all creation, over every spiritual power and dominion, and therefore can commission His disciples and empower them to accomplish the purpose and mission of God. All authority in heaven and on earth speaks of the course of history in His power and righteousness. It speaks of His sovereignty over all creation. So with such greatness, with all power and authority in heaven and on earth, yet our Lord Jesus on the other hand, is very personal in dealing and in commissioning His disciples. Our Lord is full of loving kindness and compassion, though He is the Lord of all. In verse 18, it tells us, Then Jesus came. Then Jesus came. He came. He made and initiated the first move to show himself to his disciples that he is alive, that he indeed resurrected from the dead. And before our Lord Jesus ascended to heaven, he first showed us what he can do for his followers, for his disciples. Now in Acts chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, it tells us that Jesus presented Himself alive to His disciples, appearing to them in various occasions for a period of 40 days and speak to them about the kingdom of God. And within these 40 days, Jesus, our Lord Jesus showed Himself alive in different occasions, not only to His disciples but to more than 500 believers as well, 
and we can see later he commissioned his disciples as, and assured them with this good news that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, Jesus said. And the mission Jesus was about to give is actually based entirely on his authority. The resurrection of Jesus is an assurance to the disciples to do the task with the Lord's empowerment as they have seen the Lord overcome the power of death. Within that period of 40 days, Jesus spent time teaching about the kingdom of God, strengthening them, appearing to them in several occasions, proving His power and authority in any situation, with any need and concern, and has the authority over all creation. Now, do you remember after the resurrection morning, after Jesus resurrected from the dead, Jesus came. He came. He appeared to Mary, showing himself alive as Mary was weeping because Jesus' body was no longer in the tomb. Likewise, Jesus also came. He suddenly appeared and joined the two disciples on the road to Emmaus and explained the scriptures to them, enlightening their confused minds and downcast spirits. Then, we can also see in John chapter 20, verse 19, Jesus came and appeared in the midst of his disciples and eased their fears. And in verse 26, Jesus also came and appeared and showed his sense and sight, telling Thomas not to doubt anymore. Jesus came likewise and served breakfast for his disciples who were facing at that time. Now, here we can see before Jesus ascended to heaven, he commissioned his disciples to do an enormous task, actually humanly impossible, to go and preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations. That is quite enormous and impossible humanly. And yet we can see Jesus first here prove himself to them that he is alive and he can be trusted. We can see Jesus came and ministered to them, talked to them, encouraged them, strengthened them, assured them of his presence, and proved his sovereignty by the huge cuts of fish, though the disciples cut nothing all night. And it is also written in John chapter 20, verse 30. It is written that Jesus did many other miraculous signs. This is what our Lord had done to his disciples who are depressed, who are in great fear, who are grieving, who are doubtful like Thomas, and others' disciples who are tired, who are downcast and confused. And we can see Jesus came. He then came to them, who is, who is all-knowing, who is all-present, and our all-powerful Savior. Nothing is hidden before Him, and nothing is impossible with Him. You see, though our Lord Jesus was forsaken by His disciples, denied by Peter, and doubted by Thomas. Yet when Jesus came to them, he did not rebuke them, or criticize them, or condemn, or reprimand them for their denial, for their unfaithfulness and failures. But instead, Jesus gently ministered to them, meets their various needs, strengthened them, and encouraged them. This is how our risen Lord took care of his people, and he likewise took care of us that way. Our Lord never changes. His love and compassion never fails. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, we can surrender our fears. We can surrender our burdens and difficulties and fully trust in him. Because when we truly seek him, we will find him. When you 
fully depend on Him. You will never be disappointed. When you call to Him, He will answer you. When you repent and confess your sins, He promised to cleanse you and forgive your sins. When you trust in Him and put your faith in Him, our Lord Jesus will save you and guide you. Our Lord deals with His people with compassion and promise to be with us always. And it is the mission of God that all may come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ for, for the salvation through repentance of sin by receiving Jesus as Savior and Lord. And every time the gospel is being preached that leads a sinner to repentance by believing in Jesus, angels in heaven rejoices, and there will be one less soul going to hell. Again, whenever a sinner repents and trusts in the Lord Jesus Christ, angels in heaven rejoices, and there will be one less soul going to hell. Brothers and sisters in Christ, according to the theologian A.W. Tozer, the Lord Jesus Christ knows the worst about you. Nonetheless, He is the one who loves you the most. Our Lord has proven to us that He can be trusted and even gave His life for us. He can save sinners. He is faithful. He knows everything about us, our thoughts, our intent, our struggles, our needs. And He has the power and authority to protect us, to guide us, to forgive us, to heal us, to empower us, because we are His children. We are His people. And praise the Lord that our Lord Jesus is in control. He is in control and sustaining this universe. He has the power and authority over all creation, whether physical or spiritual, whether in heaven or in earth. Therefore, in the midst of this pandemic that we are going through, we should the more proclaim our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the hearts of many are captured with fear, with anxiety, with pains and uncertainties. Jesus gave us a mission of hope and salvation to the lost. As Jesus' followers, He also gave us the power of the Holy Spirit in us to carry out the mission. A mission based and grounded on His authority the one who came from heaven, died and resurrected from the dead. And, and we, as we are empowered by His presence, we go proclaim our hope and victory in our Lord Jesus Christ to every tongue and nation. For the Great Commission is a glorious commission because the gospel brings hope and eternal life to all who believe. Therefore, we pray and invest for the Great Commission. For our investment for the Great Commission is an eternal investment. It cannot be taken away. It cannot be stolen. It will last for eternity. Therefore, we should go, proclaim the gospel, and make disciples in obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ, who lived and died for our salvation. May God continue to bless you. May His grace and mercy continue to abound in us, even as UECP family, as we obey and do the great commission that He has entrusted us. Amen.
Let's prepare our hearts as we partake of the Lord's Supper today. Around 2,000 years ago, on the night he was going to be betrayed, our Lord, the greatest missionary of all, who came from heaven to earth to bring to us God's kingdom, met with his disciples in an upper room in Jerusalem during the Passover. That night, he gave them his final instructions to prepare them for what lies ahead. There he strengthened them by praying for them and by demonstrating to them what we now call as the Lord's Supper. An ordinary breaking of bread and drinking of wine together. A simple ceremony, but it holds a great message for his followers to remember. That they may be sustained and strengthened for generations to come. In the breaking of bread and the partaking of wine, Jesus demonstrated what he was about to do. He was going to give up his body and pour out his precious blood on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and the redemption of our lives. This sacrifice is the message that will sustain the church because through it we remember that there is no sin too great, no guilt too deep, no trial so insurmountable that can separate us from the love and blessing of the Lord our God. This is the great message that our Lord Jesus live, live, lives for his people, for those who have received him as their Lord and Savior. He welcomes us to his table to remember what he did for us. So now, let us come before our Lord and confess our sins to Him. Let us ask for forgiveness and trust that His grace will sustain us for the days ahead by remembering what He did for us on the cross. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together in remembrance of our Lord who gave his life for us. After supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's drink the cup together, remembering the blood of Jesus that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, we thank you for the bread and the wine, a symbol of your love and sacrifice for us, your people. May we continue to live each day by the power of your grace, which you have showered upon us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us recite the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into Hades. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into the heaven, sat down on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I hope you are blessed in today's worship. Here are a few announcements. Our Level Up class will start again on June 18 to August 6. It will be on Friday evenings, 8 p.m. onwards. Please register uh, through the number or the QR code in your screen. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. And so let us continue to give in our charity fund through the account in your screens. Dear UECP members and worshipers, we thank our Lord Almighty for abundantly providing for our missions fund yearly. We also thank you for supporting our missionaries and seminarians, parachurches, and neighborhood outreaches by giving to our annual missions fund campaign. As we celebrate our missions month this year, may the Lord doubly bless you all. On behalf of the mission board, I'm using Apostle Paul's encouragement to the Philippians to inspire you that your givings through the years are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Let's receive the benediction. May the love of God, our Heavenly Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Spirit be with you, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.